Hello, today I am very excited to be speaking to Representative Ted Liu of California's 33rd Congressional District. Representative Liu serves on the House Committee on the Judiciary and the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. I am personally one of Representative Liu's constituents, so I am very excited to be speaking with him today. Welcome, Representative Liu. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, thank you, Amanda, and I look forward to the interview. All right, so my first question for you. The Congressional App Challenge mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in computer science and STEM. So why do you think students should participate in the Congressional App Challenge? It is a great learning experience. You get to work together with a team. You can come up with your own ideas and then you get to present it and other people get to look at your ideas. And if you're good enough, then you're going to uh, get an award uh, from Congress. So that should be uh, pretty cool. At the same <laughs> time, hopefully you'll learn uh, different skills that could help you as you continue through school. Great. And along those lines, how do you encourage students in your district to take part in the challenge? Uh, we will uh, send out emails. We uh, have a newsletter. We also contact the schools within my district. We use all sorts of different ways of outreach, uh, plus word of mouth, because we've been doing this now for several years. And so mm -hmm. every year we get uh, even more applications uh, than the, day be, uh, the year before. And you've been hosting the App Challenge since 2016. So what is your favorite memory of interacting with the students who take part in the challenge? It's when we have all the students there with their apps showing off what they actually do. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not a judge, so I actually don't see this in advance. And it's always a thrill when I actually go and then see them present uh, their apps uh, because some of them do some pretty uh, amazing things. <laughs> yeah. So this is the seventh year that we're hosting the App Challenge in the United States. What do you think the long-term benefits of hosting this App Challenge are? It's clear to me that in the 21st century, we're going to have certain fields where we're going to have growth, uh, such as STEM and computer related fields, and we need more people in these fields. We know from just having conversations with various uh, tech companies and other companies in America that they're always looking for STEM folks, for engineers, for computer scientists, and so on. And the app challenge helps to foster interest in students in these career fields. And I think that's a very good uh, long-term endeavor. Yeah. Now, I know that you were a computer science major in college. So if this challenge existed while you were in middle school or high school, do you think you would have participated in it? Just a quick correction. I'm a recovering computer science major. <laughs> okay. And yes. I. I think I would have participated in it, uh, but I would not have won because it's very clear to me there are many other people who are much better than me uh, <laughs> as programmers, uh, which is why I'm in politics now. And along those lines, so how has your computer science degree impacted your job as a member of Congress? It's made me aware of how quick technology changes. One thing you should know about the legislature, I'm a great believer in legislatures, uh, is that there are three things we are not. We're generally not quick. We're generally uh, not very flexible because once you write a law, you need to have another act of Congress to change that law. Right. Uh, and uh, we're generally not very nuanced. Usually we you know, bring a hammer to solve a problem that might require a screwdriver. Technology is almost exactly the opposite. It's fast, it's nimble, it can be very elegant, it can solve very precise problems. So oftentimes there's a very big disconnect between trying to write laws about technology and what technology actually does. So my technological background, I have the view that we generally should not try to write very specific laws on technology unless that technology is gonna kill or harm people or something very bad, but rather at least let regulators try to, to take the crack at it first because if regulators make a mistake, they can fix it uh, in a matter of months without another act of Congress. Uh, technology backgrounds are also helpful in letting members of Congress and staff members uh, understand the risks of cybersecurity deficiencies, of ransomware, of the threat of hackers, 
both criminal hackers as well as foreign uh, hackers. And so I think it's important that more people with technological backgrounds uh, either enter Congress or try to be staff on Capitol Hill. That's really interesting. Thank you. Um, so as a national leader at the intersection of cybersecurity, technology, and public policy, what do you believe to be the main barriers to equity in the tech industry? And what do you think Congress should do about it? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, just a uh, side note, uh, it is very clear to me that we have a lack of cybersecurity professionals. And so I've introduced legislation called the New Collars Jobs Act that incentivizes companies to send employees to enter the cybersecurity professional field. And we need cybersecurity professionals both in the public and private sector. And so that is, I think, an area of growth and hopefully people will be interested in looking at that area. In addition to enter a STEM career field, it's sort of hard to decide as a senior uh, in high school to do that if you haven't been prepared for it in years before. And so the best way to actually impact a human being's life is under the age of five. That's when your brain is still developing. All the studies reports show this. So that's why I support the American Families Plan, which will provide funding for universal, universal preschool for children ages three and four. If we could do that, then I think we can help a lot of students later on in life and it gives them the ability to do whatever it is that they want uh, in school. And hopefully some of them will pick uh, the STEM career field. And my last question for you, what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? Oh, um, it's amazing how quickly technology changes, right? Uh, as a kid, I remember watching um, Star Trek and they had cool little gadgets like this little flip thing that allowed them to talk to other people without lines. And mm -hmm. I thought it was super cool. And well, we have a cell phone now. And it wasn't you know that many years since Star Trek that this cell phone was invented. And you see these amazing uh, developments. Your cell phone now basically has more computing power uh, than you know many of the computers that were responsible for launching the first human beings to the moon. And so just walking around with uh, your cell phone gives you an immense ability to access information and do things and see things that people only dream about you know, 40, 50 years ago. In terms of new technology, we know that things continue to get smaller and smaller. And so what's going to end up happening is at some point, you can have so much stuff crammed into a little itty bitty device uh, that if you were to lose it, uh, it could cause a lot of chaos in your life. And so make sure you protect your cell phone against hackers. And there's free software now you can download to actually protect your cell phone against virus and other malicious hacks. Uh, but technology is, is pretty amazing. And I do look forward to some of their virtual reality technology that we're seeing. Um, and if they could ever get that right, then it could immerse yourself in a brand new, totally different environment. We're not quite there yet, but I think we're taking some steps uh, to get there. Great, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. Um, for our viewers, remember the 2021 Congressional App Challenge is live. So register and submit your apps between now and November 1st. Thank you.